friends, my name is Soumya. Welcome to my channel. The first keyword for the day is the static keyword. Now, whenever I have created classes in my previous videos, I have always created objects to access the members and methods of the class. The methods of the class, more often than not, are dependent on the members, that is, the instance variables of the class. There could be certain exceptional cases where the members or the behavior of the class is not dependent on the instance variables. So we don't need to create the instance of the classes. For example, I have a math class here where I have the min and the max methods. These methods are taking inputs and then returning the output based on the calculation. Now, these methods are certainly not dependent on the instance variables. And you will notice that I have added the static keyword for each of these methods so that they can run without the instance of the class. When the static keyword is added, the JVM executes the static method first and then creates the instances of the class. So if there are no instances or no objects of the class, how am I going to call this method? Well, I'm going to call these methods using the class name. And here I have the syntax for that. I have the class name dot the method name and I'm passing the two parameters and then the method gets called. Well, the most common method with the static keyword is the main method. If you have done some programming or at least heard of it, I'm sure you must have heard of the main method. And the syntax for the main method is Here you can notice that it has the static keyword because main is the first method that is called before any object exists and the JVM does that by using the class name. Well, you can declare both the members of the class and the methods of the class as static. When variables of a class are declared static, it means that they belong to the class and not to the instance of the class. So no copies of those variables will be made for each instance. Instead, all the instances will share the same static variable. Let's understand this better with an example here. I have created a car class with height and weight as instance variables, whereas the car count is declared as static. So this means that the car count belongs to the car class and not to the each instance of the class. So when I create instances of the class, the height and weight will vary for each of the instances, but each of the instance is going to share the same car count variable and it gets appended every time the constructor of the car is called. So I have created four instances. That means the car count becomes four and four is shared across all the various instances of the class. When methods are declared as static, there are a few key points that we need to note. Static methods can access only static variables of class and not the instance variables of a class. By now, I think it was making some sense. And if it isn't, let me explain it again. The static methods are called using the class name and not the instance. Because when a static method is called, the instance of a class might not be even present. So if the instance of the class is not present, don't you think the instance variables of the class will also not be present? And hence, they cannot access these instance variables. Secondly, static methods can call other static methods and not the non-static methods. Now, I've established this in the beginning of the video that static methods are not dependent on the instance variables and also from my first point that they cannot call instance variables while the non-static methods are the methods that are dependent on the instance variables. So, if the non-static methods are dependent on the instance variables, how will the static methods be able to access these non-static methods? This brings us to the end of the static keyword. The second keyword that I'll be discussing is the final keyword. Well, as the name suggests, the final keyword marks the value of the variable as constant and once initialized, it can never change. Now, some examples of the final keyword are the value of pi, the days of week, and the months. All of these values remain constant. The value of the final keyword variable can be assigned either at the time of declaration or in a constructor. 
If you do not assign a value at both of these places, then the compiler will give an error. We can also mark the methods and classes as final. Now imagine what will the final keyword do to a method or a class? Well, a method can be overridden and adding a final keyword inhibits the method from getting overridden. Similarly, a final class cannot be extended. Now I'll show you all of this with an example. I have had a variable called wheels and if I mark it as final, then the value that is 4 cannot be changed and then you cannot initialize any other value to the number of wheels. Similarly, if I create a final method, then this will be the only implementation of apply breaks method and it cannot be overridden by any of the child classes. I can also have a final class, but don't worry, I'm not going to declare my, class, my car class as my final class because I want this class to be extended. Well, there are classes provided by the Java library which can be marked as final classes because we do not want to create subclasses for that class. If I add a static keyword along with my final keyword, then I can use this property with the class name and I don't have to have an instance to access my wheel property. There are two bonus points as in questions that I'm going to ask you right now, but I'm going to answer them by the end of this video. If you know the answers, please put them in the comment box. The first question is, when does the call to the final method get resolved? Does it get resolved at the runtime or at the compile time? And my second question is, can I make my abstract method as final? This brings us to the end of the final keyword. The third keyword is enumeration. Please don't get scared with a heavy word. I'll be addressing it as enums throughout my explanation. Enums are just special purpose reference types. Enums represent the set of constant values that can be the only valid values for a variable. For example, I have my days of week defined as an enum, so it can hold only Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, up to Saturday as it valid values. Similarly, I have a models of four defined as enum, and these can be the only valid models for the models of four. Enum defines a class type, so it gets all the capabilities of a class, like constructors, methods, instant variables, which are not very commonly used. But enums are very commonly used throughout the Java library. The constants defined in an enum are called enum constants and are implicitly public, static, and final. Public, so they can be accessed anywhere. Static, so I can access them using the class name. And final, so that the value remains constant and does not change. Well, now we'll be discussing how we can declare, assign and do everything with an enum. If I declare a variable as enum type, then the compiler allows me to only assign values of enum type to that variable. For example, I have a day variable defined of days of week enum type. So day can hold values of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, up till Saturday. Now, you, by using an enum, it can be used more often in if-else conditions and switch conditions as I've shown here. So I can compare my day with one of the days of week. Similarly, I can have a switch case with my day variable. Enum, can ha Enum has two predefined functions, namely values and value of. Well, as the name suggests, if I want to get all the values that an enum holds, I use my values function. So if I do days of week dot values, it will give me all the values that the enum days of week holds. Value of returns the enum constant that corresponds to the string passed. So here I have written days of the week dot value of and I'm passing the string as mon. Then the enum constant referring to the 
MON is Monday and I get the output as Monday. This, this brings me to the end of the enumeration. Well, the last topic for this video is the this keyword. Sometimes the methods or the constructors would want to refer to the current object. That is the object that invoked this method or constructor. Well, in this case, the Java allows us to use the this keyword. With the help of the this keyword, we can access the methods, the variables and the constructors of the same class within the class. Let's understand this with an example. I have created a car class and have a speed instance variable. I've also created a constructor with the speed parameter. When I create the object of my car class, I pass the speed as 70. But when I try to output the speed, I'll not get the correct answer. I get zero as my answer because the compiler gets confused between the instance variable and the parameter of the constructor. To avoid this, if I add the this keyword here and then access the speed instance variable, I will get the correct answer as 70 because the compiler will replace the this keyword with the my car object because this refers to the current object. So this gets replaced with my car object and then we know that my car dot speed is talking about the instance variable whereas the speed is the parameter of the constructor. So when I pass 70, this time I'm going to get the right output. In case I don't have the speed as the parameter and I have the parameter as s, even in that case that this keyword gets added by the compiler before the instance variable. Now let's see how that this keyword can be used in constructors and methods. In constructors, this keyword is used in constructor overloading where we can invoke one constructor from the other within the same class without calling the constructors explicitly. I have written an example for that. I have a car class where I have two constructors, one with a parameter and one without it. When I'm creating the car class instance, I'm not passing the speed this time. So the car class constructor gets called is the one that does not have a parameter. Well, inside this, I have written the this keyword. So this internally calls the constructor that has a parameter and hence passes the 70. So then the speed gets assigned to the instance variable inside this constructor. Well, you can notice one thing here that this keyword should be the first statement in a constructor. And secondly, if you remember from my constructors video, super also has to be the first statement. So how do I manage the two? Well, you cannot have the this keyword and the super keyword together in one constructor. You can have either one of them as the first statement. Similar to how a constructor gets called, we can also call methods using the this keyword. Let's understand that also with an example here. I have the same car class with calculate distance method and the print details method. I'm calling the calculate distance method from the car object and internally I'm calling the print details method from the this keyword. Well, the this keyword is actually the mycar object. So internally, this gets replaced with my mycar object and then the print details method is called. So this means that we can internally call methods inside the other methods of the same class without calling them explicitly. I can also pass the this keyword as a method argument. What do you think will get passed when I pass the this keyword? Something like... Well, you got it right. This is referring to the current object. So actually, the current object gets passed when I pass the this keyword as an argument. Well, this brings me to the end of the this keyword. Now, going back to the questions I had asked when I was explaining the final keyword. <clears throat> the first question was that Java resolves the call to the final method during the compile time, not dynamically because we know that the final keyword when added to a method stops the method from getting overridden. So we know that there are no overridden methods for this particular method. So we can resolve the call at the compile time. The second question was, can we add the final keyword to an abstract method? Well, you know that the final keyword prevents the method from getting overridden. And the whole idea of adding the abstract keyword is when you want the implementation of the method. So then, 
you cannot add the abstract keyword to a final method. If you want me to discuss any more keywords that you think are important and I have missed them in my video or any other topic that you want me to discuss, please put them in the comment box. If you like my videos, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching.